Today, we're making a flaming jack-o'-lantern that measures 9 feet tall. So join me for this awesome tutorial. To begin making our giant jack-o'-lantern, we need styrofoam blocks. Now, I get all of my blocks on Facebook Marketplace, but you can also get them at the tractor supply stores. Now, some people have had a hard time locating these, so I've actually made a very helpful video. There should be a drop-down link right there where I show you where to find these blocks anywhere in the country. I've always found them for free, but that video shows you some tips and tricks on where to find them and what businesses may have this. These are what you need, and these measure 19 inches wide, 12 inches tall and 12 inches deep. We need 35 of these. When this is all glued together, it'll be seven feet tall by almost eight feet wide. The next step is super simple. We're gonna use some adhesive. We're gonna place it right over here, put a block on top of it, put more adhesive, a block on top of that. Super simple. This is gonna be seven blocks tall. We're gonna make them into columns so it's easier for us to finish gluing everything together. So let me show you how that looks. I wanted to take a quick moment to mention the first book I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat and it's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. It's rated for kids ages two to six years old and it follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. If anyone wants to support me or read it to their little ones, go check it out. Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. So look, this part is super simple. All we're doing is gluing them together, one on top of the other. Make sure everything's dressed right dress and make sure it's all level together. Super simple, this took me no more than 15 minutes to do five of these columns. Remember, we need 35 blocks. We're gonna stack them seven tall, so you should have five columns once you're done. This takes about 12 hours to dry with the glue that I'm using. I'm going to link everything that I use. I link it in the description of the video. Just press more right at the bottom and the list comes out with the links to everything I've used. Once this dries, all we're doing it is putting it on its side like this. Then we're going to grab our glue, do the same thing. Just put some glue over there, follow the instructions on the glue, whichever glue you use, and we're gonna start stacking them just like this, making sure that they're completely leveled. It all looks good. Stack them five high. Let it glue, let gravity hold it down. You don't have to do anything else. After about 12 hours, you're good to go to stand it upright. Now, you could use expanding foam, window and door. It's the blue bottle that Lowe's and Home Depot, I believe. You could use that and it'll dry much faster. It'll be done in two to three hours. The issue with that is that it creates gaps. While this glue that I'm using doesn't create any gaps between the blocks. I've used the blue expanding foam before, the blue bottle expanding foam before, and I love it, it's great results. I feel it's just a little harder to fill in those gaps once you're done, but you can totally use that. It'll dry faster and then you're ready to go. Once this dries completely, we can put it back upright and we're going to draw a face or you could superimpose a face with a projector. I'm gonna use the projector method because I have a really neat one. Again, I'm gonna link that in the description. We're gonna project it, we're gonna draw it out and then we're gonna cut it. This is a super simple project. A little bit of tedious hard work, but we'll get through it. Let's continue. So I didn't end up using the projector for this project, but I do recommend you getting yourself a projector. I'm gonna link it below. It's so amazing when you just wanna superimpose an image onto a flat surface. So I just freehanded this, very basic shape. You see the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Now we're going to cut it. I like to use a miter handsaw, but it can be a little bit messy. You can use a hot knife. I bought a hot knife a couple years ago. They're a little bit expensive, but so worth the money if you're using styrofoam a lot. So I'm gonna use the hot wire to cut the top and then we're going to cut a hole into the eyes and start cutting out the eyes. And remember, it's only 12 inches thick, so it's just gonna be two dimensional, but it'll look perfect once we put it against a garage door, a front door, an entryway, it'll just be awesome. 
So these are some of the tools that I'm using. I'm using a hot wire bow. This one is 36 inches wide. It comes with a converter. Now, this one here is expensive. They range in prices from $100 to $300, if not more. So this is for serious cutters. They make them in smaller sizes. And since I use styrofoam a lot, I definitely recommend getting one, but you don't have to. You could get a hacksaw, you can get a miter handsaw. You could just get a regular small um, hot wire knife that they sell on Amazon for much cheaper. Now that we've used our hot knife to cut all the edges to make it more circular, now it's time to make ribs. Pumpkins have ribs, as we all know, so we're gonna make maybe three, four, or five ribs going down. We're gonna get our marker, we're gonna freehand it, we're just gonna do a line like that. Then we're going to use our insulation foam knife. I recommend everybody have those. It's really sharp, and we're gonna start cutting out these channels to make the ribs. Once the ribs are done, we can use sandpaper, 40 grit or 60 grit sandpaper to start smoothing out the edges. We wanna do this before we cut out the face, the nose, the mouth, so that the ribs are in place and we can begin. So let's get to it. So what we're doing is starting at our halfway point right here, and then we're gonna do half circles like this to make the rib of a pumpkin. So let's get to it and let's cut it out. Now that we've cut out the stem with our hot wire, this is what it should look like. It's a big, bulky piece. So these pieces right here, we could fill in with caulking, and after the caulking dries, we can put some joint compound on it to smooth it out. But these pieces right here, we used our insulation foam cutting knife to just cut these little grooves out. They're no more, they're no more than half an inch deep, and we've cut them out. I used a marker first, Mark them up just like this, where I wanted the grooves to be. Then, using the knife to cut them out, super, super simple. Then let's get our 40 grit sandpaper, and all we're gonna do is start smoothing out the edges. You want them to be nice and round edges, so let's do it to the entire stem. To finish, we're gonna be using an orange paint that I got color matched from an actual pumpkin, but you can pick any style orange and just make sure it's exterior latex paint and let's paint this entire thing orange. I'm not gonna paint the inside of the eyes, nose, or mouth, so we're gonna leave it that beige color, but let's paint the rest of it. To finish, we need LED lights. Now these are floodlights, this is in color red, and we need these, I believe they're heaters. They can be used as heaters. I'm gonna link everything in the description of this video. So we attach this, we're gonna be using two of these, and we have satin sheets that I found on Amazon. They need to be satin so that they're very shimmery. We're going to attach the sheets with landscape hooks. We're just gonna pop them in there to hold it up. These go on the bottom with our box fan, and there's my timer and that's how we light it up from the inside. All right, so make sure the shimmery side faces towards the pumpkin so that it's visible from the other side, and then let's just grab our landscape hooks, put it like that. We're gonna just hammer that in. So just wanted to show you really quickly, we have the box fan right here. This is a piece of rebar 
I just dug it into the ground really quickly at an angle and stabbed it right into the back. And the box fan is just leaning back. Look at that, it's just leaning back. And we can use some landscape pins to hold it down if you'd like to, but this is it. Super simple. We have the two LED lights on the inside, not hard at all.